थ्री टू वन वे रोलिंग सो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू दिस एपिसोड ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट सीरीज एंड टूडे आई हैव गॉट अ वेरी स्पेशल फ्रेंड विद मी हिज नेम इज मिस्टर मनोज बसनेत वी ऑल्सो नो हिम एज मिस्टर मैनी एंड ही ओन्स द टोकाइमा कैफे एंड मैनी जी ट्री एंड हेल्प रन टोकाइमा कैफे आई आई हेल्प रन रन यस ही हेल्प रन यस and he also helps run uh, many z3 Manny. and bar so i asked him with if i could take his interview or not and he said uh, okay we can do that so many they welcome to the show thank you very much it's, it's a pleasure being with you today many time oh thanks thank it's a well, it's a rainy day right ah uh, what can you do this month soon if it doesn't rain right what now. are we going to eat <laughs> right? that's true that's true did you have any trouble coming here not really uh, i have a driver uh-huh. man so it's no problem no ah okay No worries. You mean did I get wet? No, I didn't. You didn't get wet. Okay. So you help in so many restaurants. Is there? I mean, what's the best dish that you've ever had? Wow, it's see, I mean, when you put this question, it, it's a one line of the best dish you had. But it it is not that simple a question. I'll tell you because so many things goes in your mind. Mm-hmm. So many dishes you've tried in your life, mm-hmm. right? when you talk about food the food you you had when you were, you, you were growing up the food you having now because of all the restrictions that are placed in you right mm-hmm. when i was growing up the best food ever everybody says that the food that mom cooked mm-hmm. right but the whole neighborhood used to come to my house to try what my mom cooked okay she did simple dish of dal bhat mm-hmm. kauli and potato curry mm-hmm. and very simple okay mutton curry uh-huh. with a little gravy in it uh, okay and tomato pico uh, okay every time every time people were asked about their favorite food mm-hmm. they used to say my mom's cooked uh, okay. meal Now in New York I found this place a very quirky place in the center of Manhattan in old Manhattan obviously 42nd street then you know was not uh, really clean at one time when when I found that place it was near a hotel called Chelsea okay. a little restaurant that did amazing lobsters mm-hmm. they had been doing lobsters in that place for the last 70 years very few people know it once i discover it what's the name of the restaurant i forgot <laughs> it's it's right by chelsea right uh-huh. it's, it's been 12 years uh-huh. I, i i try to remember what you that name once uh-huh. because somebody asked me but it's, it's very easy you go to man find this hotel chelsea uh-huh. right by the hotel this is restaurant okay and i used to take all my friends any anniversary i had any birthday i had anyone i had to entertain mm-hmm. i used to take them there uh, and that lobster the place the ambiance mm-hmm. can be replicated oh, okay. right when you think of about food you just don't think about the dish you think about the whole thing that goes around the dish was around you mm, yes the history of that food how you started liking it right it's it, it's amazing that brings food brings so much memory and 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 passion right here unfortunately i have tried many places in kathmandu mm-hmm. i've lived in the united states more than 20 years okay. and i was involved in this business for some reason i really haven't found a place that that i would call my home here okay right okay. in that sense Wait, any place your... that that because i try i i i i like good food mm-hmm. I, i like different food but i haven't found i have tried many beautiful dishes here in kathmandu no doubt right but what happens is somebody ask you hey today mm-hmm. tell me a place let's go to your favorite place When you talk about a favorite place not only a place you, you, you when you go to a restaurant it's about food also. Yes. Let's go there. I haven't found that. I I I just pick. 
I live in Jamsigal. I said, okay, let's go to the restaurant. They have nice pizza. You know, uh, just for the nice, not for the best pizza you've tasted in your but, life. But for the nice pizza. Exactly, right? It's a nice place. Mm -hmm. The food is good. Let's go, let's hang out. But not this region I want to go there because this food keeps attracting, uh, attracting me. Mm -hmm. right? In Dokama, we do phenomenal fish, the whole fish in Chinese style. It's been a staple for us for the last 15 years. And people love it. Mm -hmm. Old people who used to who keep coming back, they keep ordering like this. At Manny's, it's ribs. People, that's an attraction. And lots of restaurants do have attraction like that. Remember how Joel Momo got yeah. into fashion here? Yeah, because one restaurant started it. Which restaurant was it? It was in Zomzikhel. Um, they, they moved from that in the, in the same neighborhood. Now it's, now it's a race, right? Okay. But every time when people think about that restaurant, Joel Momo comes. And with Joel Momo, let's have Joel Momo. Brings lots of memories mm -hmm. that we had so much fun having this Joel Momo with, with so-and-so. Remember, five years ago we went there at Joel Momo? So that stays in your memory. Yes. The food has a very, when you describe food, you don't describe it like any other objects. I, I it, is, it, it is so personal. Mm -hmm. right? it, 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 it really... It really brings up lots of emotions. It really brings up, that's why mm -hmm. when you talk about food, you know, most of the time when I talk about food, if, if, if the water doesn't form in my, inside my mouth, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about food. I'm just talking about general object. Mm -hmm. You're just eating to live. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Not living to eat. Not, not at all. Okay, so what's in Nepal, in, except momos, everybody loves momos, right? So is there any other dish that you specifically like? There's nothing wrong about liking momo, see, no, I mean... No, there's, there's nothing wrong about liking momos, but there, is there anything else except that, that you can eat 24-7? Let me say, expound on, on, on this why I say that, nothing uh, uh -huh. good about liking momo. Even restaurants these days, uh -huh. when they open a restaurant, they say, momo is one dish I will not keep, because everybody comes and asks for momo, and uh, <laughs> there's so, so many things to discover. So Momo has, again, talking about food, it is a passionate food for us. It's a comfort food. For Italian, mm -hmm. it's ravioli. Mm -hmm. For Polish, it is pure yogi. For Indians, it is something, you know, masala filled stuff. Oh, yes. Dumplings. Every country in the world mm -hmm. has a favorite food and most of the time it is a dumpling. Here, it just happens to be Momo. Mom, what is the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else except momos that you... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Again, when uh, I was growing up, there were not too many restaurants mm -hmm. in, in Kathmandu. Mm -hmm. Nanglo was our favorite place. Okay. We had a little money in our pocket. We worked. Uh -huh. So we used to go to Nanglo or we used to go to Asantol where there were little eateries, mm -hmm. little holes there we used to go and, and try lots of stuff but Nanglo we used to go there because they used to do this amazing dish called sizzler chicken sizzler yeah. <laughs> and we could watch a guy walking down the steps uh -huh. with the plate with the platter in his hand smoking you know again that attract used to attract us tremendously oh. every time we had like 15-20 bucks in our pocket food then we were cheap you know, a beer used to cost 35 bucks, by the way, you know, at that time, and Nanglo had that, Shishla, and the waiter coming down the stairs with that in his hand, you know, just that whole process was, was amazing. Yeah. And besides Momo, in Nepal, Shishla, and I have tried this dish at many, many restaurants, but it, uh, they could never... It, it could never be replicated in my mind. Yeah. The aura, the, the and image of Sizzler, right? Yeah. And obviously, uh, I grew up in a Newari toll, yeah. in Langan toll. So I, I grew up uh, trying Different. and loving amazing tapas, yeah. Newari tapas, which has become a kind of, it is trending now, let's say. Newari food, right, yeah, in that yes. term. I, I grew up trying amazing dishes 
and, and the best dish that the foreigners would love is kachela. It is uncooked meat. They just mash it up, you know. Is it like choila? Just marinate. It just mar- it's, it's, it's raw meat. It's just like choila. It's raw meat. Choila is uh, roasted, then oh, marinated. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That is not. That is just minced meat. Oh. They just marinate it for hours. Oh. And, 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 and with the heat of your hand, oh. it is half cooked, right? <laughs> you have to try that. Okay. When it's done traditionally, that is one of the amazing, tasty dishes that you can try. But it has to be done right. Mm-hmm. If it is done right, food most of the time. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. So you've tried so many foods and you've been in this business since so many years. Can you tell me one problem that you've always faced? I mean, the most common problem in restaurants. Now. Now or in the past, any time that you've seen. See, first of all, we might have overestimated the size of middle class in this country. Okay. There are many, many, many restaurants, too many restaurants, mm-hmm. right? And all of our restaurants seems like target the same audience. Mm-hmm. At one time, when restaurants used to be it used to open in partner area or in tourist area in Kathmandu, they always targeted the foreigners. So menu didn't really match the appetite at the palate mm. of local people. Yes. That's why now you see so many Thakali restaurants, mushrooming like, mushrooming, so many Newari tapas places, mushrooming, because now this, this taste caters to our taste. That's true. Right? First of all, if food, you don't go to experiment food. That doesn't happen. Mm. You don't. That's why authentic Italian restaurants don't run that well because we don't go experimenting food. We go to eat food. We go to enjoy food. Mm. It's already preconceived in your mind what you're going to have. Very few experiment with food. Very few. Very few. Like, if I call myself foodie, let's go try new food. How many people can afford to be foodie, by the way? It's expensive. It's costly. Mm-hmm. In a country that, that, that you make 25, uh, 30,000 average income, every time you go out, it's going to cost you four, 5,000 bucks. So you can't afford to be that also. Mm-hmm. So there's restraint. And the problem, see, that is one aspect. One aspect. Another aspect is we are losing skill big time here. Okay. 10 years ago, when I came back from the United States and started... Uh, running this place we had skills mm. we had passion mm. and skills now there are so many schools here training people to be cooks uh, yes. and partenders and managers but they are not being trained to stay here been- all of them spend tons of money and most of them just loot money anyway there are few good schools they are good schools. We really produce good skill, but they are not being produced for our market. For the foreign market. For the foreign market. If I have to look for a chef here, mm. I, it's pretty difficult. I don't get it. But I know there are tons of chefs, you know, Nepali cooks, good cooks working outside. Mm. That is, that is a problem already. Down the line, three, four years down the line, you know, we're going to have a tremendous problem. We're already facing problem in construction, mm. in, in, in skilled lab, labor. Now this has become a very skilled, skilled labor because competition is so high, right? The skill is demanded because there's tremendous competition and every restaurant wants to differentiate themselves from the other one. You know, you don't want to be just like anyone else. Mm. For that, you need a, a unique talent, you need a unique skill. For talking about to be separate than other restaurants, you, we need to have something different. Something different. That comes from people. Yes. From the skills, mm-hmm. which we lack tremendously. And that, it, 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 it will take lots of effort. Lots of effort. Otherwise, uh, three, four is down the line. See, uh, and the problem that I see here is all, there is money in the market. Mm-hmm. But 
it's not channeled well. We don't have any industries, bigger industries. Yes. Right? We can band together and create an industry. We will not be able to compete with India and China and float the market with our goods. Because we because don't have the, any industry. Uh, the market is always floated by cheap, cheaper goods. We cannot compete with that. So what happens, a little bit of money you have, right, in the hope that hopefully the tourism will really bloom in this country. Mm -hmm. They're talking about 2 million people by in 2020. They'll be talking about 4 million people. So that with that hope, people are investing in restaurants and hotels and resorts and all. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. that's true. There are no other industries for us to invest. Mm -hmm. There's husbandry, forestry, farming, right? There's so many. People aren't interested in that. For some reason, money is being poured into restaurants and, and resorts. Because pouring money in restaurants, people think it is easy. It is, it's, you go to a restaurant Fridays, there's tons of people, merry, making, fun and all the thing, it's glamour, right? But that's once a week. Running yes. restaurant is not easy. And people are pouring money into this industry. They're just throwing it away. Go to Jamsi Oh. How many but, restaurant do you, empty restaurants do you see on Friday? Right? Wouldn't you rather have all this money channelized into a proper industry that our country really needs? Right? That is a problem also because there's too much supply yeah. and demand isn't there yeah. for that kind. So this will be a problem. In the future. In the future also. Already is a problem. Right? Because first of all, we don't have people manning those restaurants. And if you go from one restaurant to restaurant and the food is the same, the, everything else is the same, so what's the fun for people? What's the incentive for them to spend money? Unless you go out twice, three times a week, right? If, unless people start going out to restaurants, it's a great thing because the economy will be really strengthened. Yes. You need to pour money into the economy so money gets recycled. That's good for people to spend money, but they have to ha have a reason to ready to go out. Not only on birthdays, not only on Fridays yeah. or anniversaries. Mm -hmm. People have to come out at least two, three times a week. Only on me. Even, even in the United States, mm -hmm. right? They, uh, there was a research around 1995, 50% of the restaurants close or change hands within two years of the opening. Because people don't eat over there. People spend massive amount of money. It's because people think it is easy to run. People think it's, it's fun. Okay. Right? So people just, are, in, investors are just attracted. Okay. I had my own bar, which did pretty well. In New York. They, the balance is lacking. Right? Unless we... Uh, we find this balance, people will keep getting attracted to this industry and lots of money will be getting wasted. And uh, the skill is, you know, going back to the original thing, the skill is a problem. Okay, so I've got this one question. You spoke about skill, right? And now, when you, do you use Instagram, first of all? No, no, I have to start using Instagram. <laughs> okay. I've been told to, right? I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I lack a little knowledge, you know, using all these social medias. Okay. So whenever you open uh, Instagram, you see these advertisements of restaurants. And to be honest, those advertisements are really good and those really attract people. But then what I have seen, like you said, it all comes back to skill. I go to these restaurants. Right. They've got excellent marketing strategy. They've got everything in the marketing aspect. But then when it comes to food, I mean, they're... They're not so great. I mean, they raise the expectations to too high, I guess. And then the food is just not so great. So don't you think if they invest in the skill aspect, they might grow up much more faster? See, I, I will tell you a story that will explain mm -hmm. the whole thing. While I was opening Manny, mm -hmm. it was seven years ago, mm -hmm. eight years ago, actually, mm -hmm. I had a cook from Thai 
mm-hmm. Thailand, training my staff. I trained them for four months. So my restaurant was Thai food, mm-hmm. continental, and this is uh, very eclectic tapas. So the trainer, and one day I, I told him, you know, we've been eating and managed for the last month. We, we, we you know, you've been training, we, we just try our food, let's go try a Japanese food today mm-hmm. at, a, at a place I know. I'd been there a, a year ago in this neighborhood. I, I will not uh, take the name of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. We went there, sat down, and he looks at the menu, looks at me, right? He looks at the menu and then looks at me. I said, I was like, is there anything I can do for you? He says, Manny, this is not a Japanese restaurant. So what do you mean? They have Thai menu, the same name. <laughs> and I said, no. And then I, it struck me. So what happened was, mm-hmm. when they opened the restaurant, mm-hmm. there was a chef who probably did good Japanese food, and I tried their food, the food was pretty good. That's why I took him back there. Mm-hmm. Now the guy left. Oh, so they changed Nobody the menu. Nobody knows oh. his menu. Okay. They probably looked for a Japanese cook. They didn't find it. They found a cook, a chef, who said, I can do Thai food. Uh. And they had to use some kind of menu. They said, okay. And, and this is what happens. Uh, a cook will come, interview a guy. This is limited skills they have. Most of them, I've interviewed so many of them, come, okay, I know Thai food. That's great. I was looking for a Thai food, right? I, and you tell them to cook something. So you can try this skill. They'll say, no, this is what I do. I do this 30 dishes. I'll make a menu out of this. And this is all I do. That's, I don't go beyond that. That's pretty much useless. That is useless. But this is exactly what's been happening here. Oh. That is why. Uh, okay. That is why you go to kitchen. Most of the time you go to a restaurant. Most of the time you are disappointed because of this. See? Mm. I tell you, Tokoma Cafe has, we do very simple menu here. Mm-hmm. Then nothing fancy. But the cooks I have have been working here for 15 years, 12 years, 13 years. So at least I have consistency. Mm. That's more important. Right? Nothing fancy about our menu, mm-hmm. but there is a consistency. If you like certain thing, come back after four years. Mm-hmm. You order that stuff, food. Mm-hmm. You'll get the same taste. Yes. Because the same person has been cooking that for the last 15 10, years. 15 years. This is not easy to maintain all the time, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right? Why would you want to have a guy working for you for 30 years? Right? It's pretty difficult. Right. But this is also lacking because there's tons of, there's tremendous turnover. Mm-hmm. Right? There's tremendous ton- turnover. And we are not very organized also. Most of us in the rest don't keep the recipes that everyone has to follow, right? It is just you know how to your it, taste kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, it's good, right? Mm-hmm. But the guy cannot replicate the same thing okay. the following day because by chance sometimes the food comes out good. Mm-hmm. They are good cooks here, right? But there are very few. That is the problem. Mm-hmm. I have a chef uh, at Manis who has been with me for eight years. So go there, this, see, I do this because I can look at this business from a bird's eye view. I know exactly what's needed, right? I know the most consistent place in the restaurant has to be the kitchen, Mm. has to be the kitchen because it's food. Rest is easy to manage. The kitchen is not. There's a total different breed of people out there. And you got to have a leader mm-hmm. in the kitchen who knows his or her stuff. Mm-hmm. Once you have that, the rest can be, the, the rest becomes very easy. So the main problem is the kitchen. It's everywhere. It's the kitchen. It's, it's, it's a restaurant yeah. food. Oh, yes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So in the end, it all comes down to skill. Of course. Like, like, like everywhere. Everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. We talk about passion. We talk about love for the work, love for this, love fashion, everything. But if you don't have scale, all this, it's useless. It's just, just cliches. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can give a speech and passion for one hour. If you don't have skill, if you can't do anything, your passion doesn't take you anywhere. Mm. Life lesson. Right? <laughs> if, if you are good looking, maybe you can be an actor. Uh -huh. Besides that, you are useless. Got to have skill. Mm -hmm. And another problem, another problem in this country, uh, we are learning is this, uh, we don't have people skill. This, we, now there are lots of management schools. Oh. When I look at young guys like you, oh. <laughs> okay. right? No, I, I really feel encouraged. Okay. Yeah, I don't have that. Somehow we still run our industries, run our government, run our places, run our households from old school mm. thoughts. Not gonna work anymore. We need to update ourselves. No, it's not. It's not because the, the world has opened up. See, even a person who hasn't left his, his little village, a person who hasn't left Kathmandu, no stuff. That just, just 15 years ago would be mind boggling. Mm. This world has opened up right in front. It is exploded. And it is not easy to handle people if you don't apply the new school thoughts. Mm -hmm. People are different. Mm -hmm. So we never, we were never taught that people are different with different needs. Uh, most of all, in our society, the pride is ingrained deeply. It might be false pride, mm -hmm. but it rules us. The pride rules us. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to be able to handle individual pride. Mm. Right? We can stay hungry for seven days. Mm. Uh, look at people don't protest too much yet. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> they don't. Hunger strikes are not there. Yeah, I mean, occasionally, occasionally. But, but not for the. Uh, 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 right? Uh, yeah, I get But you. more me. Uh, that, 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 that thing in our culture is ingrained amazingly deep that we need to be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. That, do that, mm -hmm. it's cool, right? Yeah. Somehow, I was, I was schooled in the United States uh -huh. and I have had, uh, I had, had great mentors, my bosses, mm -hmm. my professors. I really learned a great deal from them of how to handle people. One, one and only way to handle people in this country because bribing doesn't work at this level. We don't have money to bribe. So how do you make people work for you? How do you turn people loyal to you? Motivate them. It's motivate them and recognize them, their pride, that one, keep it, polish it really nicely. See, when I'm speaking this, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking like a politician, oh. right? Saying one thing to anything. Not really. People will read you anyway. You say one thing today, you're doing something else a day after. Right? You're naked. Oh. That's true. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is empathy. Oh. Empathize. Empathy. Got to bring tremendous empathy in the workforce. That's what we lack. You got to empathize eyes with your staff. You got to be them. You got to be one of them. Yes, you, you have to. You have to. See, this, this I, I'll make it very short. You work for 30 days in a factory, mm -hmm. in a kitchen is a factory too. It's hot all day. It's smoky all day. It's not easy to work in the kitchen for 10, 12 hours a day. It's not easy. Unless you understand that, you'll never be able to motivate your staff. Right? These people cannot affo afford one beer a day. They cannot go home and say, oh, I, I, I had my 10 hour shift. Let's have Hard days of work, let's have one beer and chill. They can't afford it because that's the whole salary. Mm. Right? Mm. You've got to be able to empathize with that. You're making sense. Right. <laughs> they have kids at home. Uh -huh. They have to send them to school. Uh -huh. I cannot talk about uh, cafe. Cannot take care of that with twenty thousand a month. Sending two schools, good schools, will cost them twenty thousand a month. Yes. Now they're sending them to public school. The kids will turn out to be bums later. You know that. They know it. Mm. Now you got to be able to empathize with that. While I send my kids to Ratamangala school, or Yulen, 
or whatever. Now you got to be able to empathize with that, right? You got to show them hope, dude. As long as I'm doing well, I'll make sure you do well. As long as Tokama is doing well, as long as Man is doing well, as long as some other place is doing well, I will not leave you behind. That's how people will be with you for 15 years. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no reason. That's how you bring consistency. Yeah. Empathize. Hope is amazing. And, and see, when you go forward, when you improve, make sure improve they, they are not left behind. Uh. That's they nice. will stick with you. Uh, uh, this we learn, uh -huh. then we can keep skills. Otherwise, there's no uh, otherwise, use. It's, it's useless. Where is incentive? Yeah. Hope is the most strongest incentive in the world. You got to be able to keep that. In anywhere, restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. We think restaurant is, it's a restaurant. Man, 20 to 30 people, we employ 55 people here, 57 people here. The livelihood depends on us. The families depend mm. on this place doing well, right? So this is not a, a small thing because lives depend yes. on work, mm. right? We got to bring that kind of seriousness mm. in what you do. And everything starts from empathy. Government has to empathize with businesses like us because we create jobs, mm -hmm. right? And another thing, uh, that uh, the tough thing, the skill is one thing, to, uh, retaining skill. Another thing is the government does not, does not support any businesses here. Especially, think about it. Re why restaurants, things like restaurants and little bodegas and little businesses are important because they create jobs, millions and millions of jobs. Mm -hmm. Right, and investment is not that high. If the government wants to create one thousand jobs, they have to they invest like create amazing amount of money, and half of that is wasted. And they never do things well. But we do things very well. To create thousand jobs, it doesn't cost us too much because all of us are together here. I create fifteen jobs. You create ten jobs small investment. We work very hard. We work for 18 hours, 19 hours a day. We need support. And the government is here just to bloody give us hard time. That's all they do. <laughs> right? And unless this attitude changes, mm -hmm. see, attitude from the owners, owners have to learn to empathize mm -hmm. with their workers. Government has to learn to empathize with us. Mm -hmm. Right? The empathy has to be there. This, only this can bring us together and really move forward. Mm, that's true. Unless this, this happens, thing is there, nothing it's going to be very, very difficult because mm. everything's breaking apart. Yeah. So, Mentai, it was lovely having an interview with you. I would love to talk more, but then it's over half an hour. It's a pleasure. Most of the time I blabber. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> it was very informative. Yeah, thanks. So, Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this episode. I hope you had a bigger, wider insight in what restaurants are really doing in Nepal, how it really is to run a business. And I hope you like this video. Follow Manny that I'm keeping his handles down below, social media plat uh, handles, and follow me. If you like this video, share it as well. And I will see you soon in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.